Hi, Mrs. Green. Hello. Okay, let me wash my hands. I'll be right with you. Row, row, row your boat gently down the street. <laughs> That's how they teach the little kids to do it long enough. Okay, so who are you? Jenny Green. Jenny Green. Let me just check your name then. Okay, that is correct. I'm over here. Okay, and where are you today? I'm in the hospital. And what's the date? It's a Thursday. And what are you doing here in the hospital? Um, just to check out. Okay, so we've done orientation to person, place, time, and context. And we've also checked their... Um, their nails, their skin, this warmth, cap refill, and as we do the rest of the assessment, if we notice anything out of the ordinary with skin, skin breakdown, or lesions, we'll be doing the A, B, C, D, E, asymmetry, border, color, diameter, exudate, elevation, evolution, firmness, and growth. That was rough. All right, so I'm going to inspect the face and head and palpate the head. Have you had any head trauma lately? Okay. And as we're doing all this, we're assessing the environment. Um, it's not just the patient, but also the patient's environment. Read the smallest line you can read. Okay. Um, 428739. Okay. And the other eye. 428739. You just memorized that. <laughs> all right. Look straight at me. So corneal light reflex, looking for the, where the light reflects in both eyes. Inspecting the eyes and pupils are equal and round. And they react to light, consensual and direct. And look across the room, focus, and focus on my finger, and accommodation. All right, just follow my finger with your eyes. So looking for diagnostic your uh, diagnostic gaze or extraocular movement, which are intact, and look straight ahead. Ideally, you do this in a darkened room, but for the sake of camera, we're looking for the red reflex. If the red reflex were not there, it'd be an opacity of some kind, most likely a cataract. Next, we're going to assess hearing. So, say the word. And another word. Elephant. Elephant. So tympanic membranes are clear or gray, and external auditory canal is clear. All right. While we have the patient saying words, I'm going to say three words, I'd like for you to remember, say them after me, and then later on I'll ask you what those words were. So the first one is trash can. Trash can. Penny. Penny. And car. Car. And inspect the nose. Look up, please. All right. And palpate. Is there any tenderness here? Okay. Now we're going to assess the mouth. So open your mouth, please. Stick out your tongue and say ah. Uh. Ah. Okay. Now we're going to do cranial nerve five. Let's close your eyes and tell me what you feel. Okay. And you open your eyes. Uh, let's take out, sorry, that was cranial nerve five sensory. So now I want you to smile and frown. Pop out your cheeks. Don't let me push them in. And close your eyes as tight as you can. Don't let me open them. And that's facial nerve. Now we're going to palpate the jaw, bow it down please. And that's the motor portion of trigeminal nerve. And while we're here, we just go ahead and assess lymph nodes. So occipital, posterior auricular, preauricular, tonsillar, submandibular, submental, su uh, deep cervical, superficial cervical, and posterior cervical. And then we have supraclavicular. Take a deep breath. Okay, and then we're going to inspect the neck. So trachea is midline. I don't see any masses or enlargement of the thyroid. And now we're going to palpate the thyroid. 
and you can choose either the anterior or, or the posterior approach. Okay, and there's no nodules. All right, so next we're going to go to the back and we're going to do um, spinal assessment. So, here. Let me know if there's any tenderness here. Nope. Any tenderness there. Nope. And any tenderness here. So, there's no paraspinal, sacroiliac, or costovertebral angle tenderness. Why don't you take some big breaths through your mouth? Okay, can breathe normally for a moment. And uh, we're gonna do chest expansion, take a breath, and we're looking for symmetry. And now tactile firmness, say 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. And bring your arms up a little bit. 99, 99. Okay, and percussion. All right, and a few more big breaths. And from the right front is the only place you can hear the right middle lobe. All right, so now we're gonna listen to the heart, breathe normally. So the aortic, pulmonic, Second pulmonic, or herbs, tricuspid, and bicuspid, or mitral. And then, if we had a bell, we'd listen again with the bell. Now we're listening for lower pitch sounds like murmurs. And when using the bell, we want to use light pressure. All right, that's great. Lay back, please. And now we're gonna to listen to the heart again. Okay, now we're going to auscultate the arteries, starting with carotid. And bring your shirt up, please. Then the aorta. The renal arteries. Iliac arteries. And femoral arteries. And while we're here, we're going to assess the abdomen. Let me know if there's any tenderness. So light palpation first and observing her face, see if she's grimacing. Then we go a little bit deeper, now palpating for masses. Now palpating for the liver. First, see if it's enlarged below the costal margin. Then under the costal margin, take a deep breath, please. And the hook technique. One more deep breath, please. And then we're assessing for the spleen. Take a deep breath. And you wouldn't expect to feel the spleen unless it was at least three times as large. And uh, while we're, you can bring your shirt down. While I was auscultating for the arteries, I also was hearing bowel sounds, so we'll move on to the next part of the exam as well. All right, so now we're going to palpate for carotid. One at a time, please. First, make sure the patient doesn't faint. Radial arteries, femoral arteries, 
and then we've got popliteal, and we'll do the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial when we do the feet later on. You guys can sit up, please. All right, um, what were those three words I told you earlier? Trash can, penny, car. Trash can, penny, and car. Um, next thing we're going to do is sensory exam. I messed up your flow. No, you didn't. No, I did. I messed it up. Yeah. yeah. I know. I'm just saying you guys wanted to do cranial nerves five and seven earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm so used to doing them now. So we'll do anyway. Them now. All right. Well, <clears throat> close your eyes, please. No. Now we're gonna do the sensory exam. So I previously did all the cranial nerves except for seven and uh, sorry, five and seven, and then also eleven. So we do those now. Um, I want you to close your eyes. I already said that, didn't I? Now, what do you feel? All right, so that's cranial nerve five for sensation, trigeminal. And then I want you to um, smile and frown. Puff out your cheeks. Close your eyes very, very tightly. Don't really open them up. So that's spatial nerve. And then um, bite down and that is the motor portion of cranial nerve number five. And then I want you to shrug your shoulders and push, like turn your head, there you go, turn your head this direction, and push forward and pull back. And that is spinal accessory nerve. Um, so from here, we can go ahead and just finish up the rest of the motor exam. So push your arms out and bring them in. And you're like this, push out, push down, push out, and in. Like this, like this. Push out, push, 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 and pull in, pull. All right, squeeze my fingers. Ah, oh, hurts, look up, thank you. Pull up, and pull up. Push out, and in, push out, and in, push out, and in, and pull up. And for here, we can go ahead and palpate posterior tibial. And then also Dracellus penis, which you'd have to take your shoes off to do for real, but we're just demonstrating. Um, reflex, good reflex hammer. Um, all right, reflexes are plus two bilaterally. Um, only doing the patella for this particular exam. All right. Close your eyes and put your hands in your lap, please. So now we're going to do light touch. Where did you feel that? Okay, so we've assessed the radial ulnar and median nerve on the hand. Okay, why don't you do, close your eyes and tell me what you feel. Okay, and next, I'm going to see if you can tell the difference between the sharp end and the dull end. Close your eyes. This is dull, and this is sharp. So which one is that? Dull. Okay. All right, so we've done um, all of them except for proprioception. So I want to isolate the finger, close your eyes. This is up, this is down. Which one is that? Up, down, down, up. Okay, and the other hand, please. Up, down, up, down, down. Okay, and then we're gonna choose two of the fine localized touch. And so I'm going to choose graphesthesia and stereognosis. So what I want you to do is hold your hand up like this, close your eyes, and I'm going to draw a letter in your hand. This is an S. So what letter is that? A C. And what letter is this? A T. Okay. And your other hand, please. So this is an X. What letter is that? A. And what letter is that? A B. 
close enough. Thick. Yeah. <laughs> B's R's case. It feels so simple. Okay. Um, and now keep your eyes closed. Hold out your hand. And what is that object felt looking like? I know. <laughs> and the other hand. A roll of tape. All right, thank you. All right, so we've, and then the other ones, if you want to do those, would be point location. So close your eyes, and I'm going to touch you somewhere. I want you to point to that location. And then there's extinction, where you do upper and lower on opposite sides at the same time. You feel both touches. Mm -hmm. And then um, last one is two point discrimination. So you would say, you know, close the distance every time until they can't tell the difference between two or one touches. So those would be the five localized touch, we only have to do two. Um, next, we're gonna do um, cerebellar function, so coordination. So what I want you to do is, I want you to look at me, don't look, look at me, there you go. And then touch my finger, and I'll touch your nose, and keep going. Now close your eyes and keep going. <laughs> mm, patient is impaired. All right. Next, we want to do rapid alternating movement. And again, you don't have to do all three, just choose one. So, I'm going to put your hands in the lap like this and then turn them over and keep going. And go as fast as you can go. All right. And then the last one is without looking, take your heel, put it on your shin, and scrape it on your. There you go. So, those would be your three that you can do. All right. So, this time, I want you to go ahead and stand up. All right, and hold your arms out straight. Close your eyes. And just stand for a moment. So you got a negative Romberg test. All right, and then open your eyes and just walk over that way. And then turn around and walk back on your toes. And then turn around and walk back on your heels. And then turn around again and walk with one heel directly in front of the other toe without looking. All right, that's good. All right, and that is our assessment for head to toe. Um, so if at the end we're going to ask you, did you forget anything? And you'll have a chance to say, oh, I forgot to do this. And then you can go back and do it. And if you self-correct, then you won't lose any points. <laughs> Are we still in frame? Yes. <laughs> Just say that one more time. You'll have to cut that out. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. so at the end, we'll ask you if you forgot anything. And if you say yes and you self-correct, then you won't lose any points. If you, we have to prompt you, you can be prompted twice without losing points. If you have to be prompted for more than two things, then you're going to lose points and you're going to have to do the entire thing again. <coughs> Did I miss anything? All right, so last thing we need to do is a normal assessment documentation. So let's just think about what we did during that head to toe assessment and we'll document it. So for head, what was the most important thing about the head? What, was, what were we assessing? Okay, so, so you can say no asymmetry and atraumatic. Those are the two most important things we were assessing for. Then for the eyes, what was the first thing we assessed for, or should assess for, I should say? Vision. So, vision was 2020. OU is both eyes. OS is left eye, OD is right eye. That's not <laughs> <laughs> Can I just start again? Sorry. Talking and writing is harder than you believe. <laughs> so, uh, 2020, both eyes. And then we had um, negative corneal reflex, corneal like reflex, I should say. What's the corneal reflex? So you stick something in their eye and they blink. We did not do that particular test. So corneal light reflex. We had perla. And then we had extraocular movements were intact. 
and red reflex was present. Okay, so that's one of the biggest assessments that you have in terms of documentation. And then for the ears, we had hearing was grossly intact. What does gross mean? That patient's so gross. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is that what I mean by gross? They can just hear. So it's whispered word. Or you could say hearing intact whispered. And then we have the tympanic membranes were gray. No inflammation. And the external auditory canal, the EAC, Eastern Australian Current, was clear. <laughs> then we have the nose. No inflammation. And no sinus tenderness. The neck, trachea is midline, no lymphadenopathy, and the thyroid was soft and no nodules. And we've completed the neck and head. So now we have respiratory. So for respiratory, we had um, vesicular breath cells. You can also say clear auscultation if you wanted to. So vesicular breath cells, excursion or expansion is symmetrical. Primitus was symmetrical. Percussion was resonant. All right. Um, you could also say no clubbing in this area. You could talk about skin, no cyanosis, and that sort of thing as well if you wanted to. We are not going to at this time. Cardiovascular. So for cardiovascular, we have um, S1, S2, no, sorry, S1, S2, regular rate and rhythm. So the heartbeat was steady. It wasn't like boom, 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 boom. It was just boom, 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 boom. So regular rate and rhythm. And then no murmurs, gallops, or rubs. And then we had no bruies. I'm going to say where they were. So no, or where they weren't. So no bruies at the carotid, aorta, renal, iliac, and femoral. And then the pulses. We're plus two bilateral, carotid, radial, femoral, dorsalis pedis, and posterior tibial. Um, now, a lot of times DP and PT will actually be plus one, not plus two. And so you might want to break those out separately. And then the last thing we had was cap refill. Less than two seconds. And no edema. So now you've got cardiovascular. Then we had 
the abdomen. was soft, flat, non-tender, bowel sounds were present, and no hepatosplenomegaly. And we have neuro, we would say neuromuscular, since we kind of did those together. Cranial nerves, 2 through 12, were intact because you did not test olfactory sensation. And sensation intact. For light, light, pain, position, vibration, and then we also did um, graphesthesia. And stereognosis. Right. Then for the motor exam, we had strength was five for five, bilaterally, upper and lower. And then um, we also did um, the, back, the back exam, so there was no spinal tenderness. No SI tenderness. And no CBA tenderness, which is technically GU, but we're not documenting GU on this particular exam, so whatever. And then we have cerebellar intact, and you want to say which one you did, so finger to nose or whatever. And we have the patellar um, reflexes or plus two bilaterally. And the last thing was gait was intact. And you want to say which ones you did. So gait, um, gait was intact, and then heel slash toe slash tandem. And negative Romberg, since we did a Romberg test too. It's a lot of stuff. Congratulations. And I'm sure you're going to get it in about 12 minutes. You have up to 20 to do it. It's got to be less than 20. You should be able to do it within 15 easily, even talking your way through it like we did in the video.